imaginary numbers. Now the question here, right, imaginary means they don't quite exist. Well, no, they don't quite exist in a physical realm. They exist in the realm of logic. And yet, in the realm of logic, it turns out that it help us to realize that certain parts in our real life consist of those things that doesn't necessarily show up in real numbers. So, where does it come from? And now, now uh, by the way, um, very quick, imaginary number has, shows up in sound waves, it shows up in uh, electricity and circuits, it shows up in, uh, in your semiconductors, it shows up in, in, uh, in the way we uh, work through uh, uh, general theory relativities, special theory relativities, it shows up. And you're like, what? But it doesn't really seems to be really hard to grasp logically. So where does it come from? Okay, so take example, x squared is equal to 4, right? We know that this, this is very straight up, right? We know that the square root on both sides, right? Then you end up with x is either equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 2. Very simple. Now, what does it mean? The meaning, the meaning of this process is you take this number, right? You go, go back. You say, okay, you take 2 squared, does it get 4? Yes, it gets 4. You take negative 2 and then square, does it get 4? Yes. But <clears throat> there's a problem. When you have x squared is equal to negative 4, right? x is equal to negative 4, you square root on both sides. You end up with x is equal to square root of negative 1 times 4, which can be written as, say, you know, square root of negative 1 times 2. But then, like, what do you do? What's the square root of negative 1? What can be squared? And get you negative. Can there be anything square to get you negative? No. no. At least not in a real life sense. But on paper, you can make it happen. <laughs> you can make it happen. So <laughs> you can actually make it happen. You can say, okay, now I'm gonna start redefining this. I'm gonna redefine, right? So that as a consequence. There's no way to figure out this, 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 is, this negative square, square root of negative 1 is a big problem. Right? Because nothing squares get you negative, negative 1. Right? There's no such thing. However, well, we can then redefine the world, right? <laughs> redefine, redefine this. We say, okay. Since we can't deal with x square root of negative 1, we're just going to say, we're going to use this, we're going to use i, by the way, it's a little lower squared with a little, 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 little tail, <laughs> the end, little i. Let's call i equal to square root of 1. Let's just call it that way. I mean, you know, since I can't deal with this, I just call it a different thing. Call it as it is. Alright? So i is equal to negative 1. Oh my gosh, it has a pretty profound consequence. Because, let me show you how, how this works out. Are you okay? Are you still with me? Kind of. Kind of? <laughs> it sounds half like aftermath, half like the insane ramblings of the math man. <laughs> no, no, it's going to go more than a okay? It's going to go more than a Let's take a look at this. Hey, hey, hey. Stay with me. Stay with me. So we say, we say i is equal to square root of 1, a negative 1. i. i is equal to square root of negative 1. Uh, can I make it like. 
you know, well, well technically, so if you have i is equal to square root of negative one, then I can technically have two i, right? So that just means two square root of negative one. I can have three i, four i, et cetera, et cetera, right? So then there's different thing. I can also have this. Uh, can I, if i is equal to square root of negative one, can I have i squared? Um, that would be i is equal to negative one. Yeah, 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 that's right. Well, if I score equal to negative one, because it's square root of negative one times square root of negative one, which gives you negative one. So I square is equal to negative one. Okay. Let's just follow with that logic. Can we have I to the third power? Uh, that would be negative one to the second power, so one. Right, so it will be I squared times I again, right? So, and, and I squared, we just found out is negative one. So it's negative one times i, so it's negative i. Yeah? All right, let's keep that logic going. Can we go with i to the fourth power? That would be like, I, you can either use i squared times i squared, right? Which is what? Negative one times negative one. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? It's a real number. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Wait, hold on. Negative one, wait. Okay. Keep going, keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep the logic going. Wow. All right, the next one. I to the five, fifth power. Well, I to the fifth power is just I to the fourth power times I. What well, says I to the fourth power is one times I. Then I to the fourth power is I. So it goes back to the first one. No. So if i to the sixth power, it would just be i to the fifth power times i again, which is what? i times i, which is i squared. But we just figured out i squared. i squared is equal to negative one. i to the seventh power. <laughs> Let's just keep going, right? That's since we're at it. So i to the sixth times i, which is negative one times i, which is negative i. Oh, wait a minute. It's, it's mapping the third one. Okay, i to the fourth power. Well, you get a point. This one becomes i to the seventh power times, no, uh, eight. i to the eighth. What are you want? So negative i times i, which is negative i squared, which is one. Hey, look at this. It goes Every four, repeating. Repeating. Now, let's get a little even wilder. You ready for something even wilder? What are you on? <laughs> I'm on <a> algebra high. <laughs> So here, watch this, watch this, watch this, right? So, so technically, I can put this, imagine, I can say, oh, I have a line, and this line is called an imaginary line, imaginary axis, right? This is the axis, imaginary axis. And then I can have, I can have i, 2i, 3i, 4i, etc., etc. Yeah, makes sense, right? Now, if I go in that direction, then the positive direction, I can have i, 2i, 3i, 4i, and anything in between, right? If I go in this direction, what do I have? Ne negative i, right, negative i, negative 2i, <laughs> negative 3i, etc., etc. What number am I missing so far? Between I and negative uh, I. Zero. And this is where we break the space line. <laughs> now, now, I'm bringing a parallel universe here now. I'm going to parallel universe. All right, multiverse. All right. We're talking about Spider Man now. Multiverse. Now, we live here. This is 
is where this 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 is this is where uh, this is where Daniel lives. <laughs> Nice hair. <laughs> Daniel lives in the real axis. In real axis, you got zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Make sense? Right? Real axis, imaginary axis. All right, so what's happening here? You ready? So, I'm going to put Daniel here. This is our typical X, right? We got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe he's standing over here. Okay. Now, come back to here. Between the imaginary world and the real world, what do they have in common? Zero. They share zero. So what can I do with the imagined accents? I can take it, bring it over here, and I go, mm, and then I can put it up here. I, two I, three I, four I. Negative I, negative two I, negative three I. So Daniel right now lives in a real axis on X. But I could put <laughs> maybe I'll put Jasper here. I'll put Jasper over here. No, no, no. He's no, 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 no. He's not imaginary. He's he's on the no no he's on the he's not even on the imaginary plane. He's on the complex plane. Can't do that. So where is he? He is over here at two plus three i. That point is two plus three i. That's it. This is his location. 2 plus 3i. So whenever you see 2 plus 3i, it is a real plus imaginary. And this thing is called the complex number. <laughs> this is called the complex number. Now, we're almost out of time. We're almost out of time, but here's 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 really interesting point, right? Take a look at this. When you had two plus three i, say Jasper at two plus three i, and he's gonna go and meet with Ali. Ali is sitting over here at this is Ali. Right? And she is over here at negative 2 minus 2i. Two right? We can technically, right? Oh, negative, yeah, negative 2 minus 2i. Two Does this remind you of something? Yes. Oh, factor. Yes. Factor. It's all connected. Thank you. Yeah, is <laughs> so I'm going to stop here now. I'm going to continue. If I feel like I think I need to teach you a little bit more uh, in addition to complex, and then what we do is we're going to do a bunch of different equations similar to the previous sort of quadratic equation and solution, but in a complex way or complex, complex manner, with imaginary and real. And then when that's done, we're going to bring it back all together. Alright, so we're going to be very close to finish out this chapter. Very close. How's it going? Wow.